right, in this video, we're going to show you how to punch in while recording, or I do a recording punch in in Pro Tools. Very easy to do. All right, so I'm going to start with a little blurb of recording here. All right, I'm recording my voice for the purposes of demonstrating a punch in in Pro Tools. Okay. So I've got, I don't know, maybe 20 seconds worth of audio here. I like it. I'm going to select it, hit the E key after I enable the A to Z button. <clears throat> and there it is. Okay. So first of all, what is a punch in? A punch in is a recording over an existing recording or in place of ex an existing recording. Here's an example. So I've made a record pass 20, 25 seconds long or so. I, I'm happy with it, it sounds great, except there's one small section in the middle that uh, I flubbed a word or I just don't like that the performance at that particular location. I don't wanna record the whole thing. The rest of it's good. I just wanna re-record the one small piece in the middle and that's what I have selected here. Now. If I go into record, first of all, I've made a selection. By making a selection, I'm telling Pro Tools I, that I wanna go into record at that particular location and I wanna come out of record at, at the end of that selection, right? But I'm gonna to need to have a little bit of a pre-roll here. So I'm gonna go up, make sure that my transport and expanded transport views are enabled and I'm gonna do a pre-roll. It's set kinda of high. I'm gonna to go to one bar. Let's see where pre-roll starts. Pre-roll means it's gonna start playback one bar ahead of my selection. Creating a punch in so that I have a little bit of a leeway. I've got a running start on this record bit. I know what's happening but prior to the punch in location. I can get in, if it's a song, I can get into the rhythm of the song and punch in in a musical fashion that makes sense. All right, so I've enabled my pre-roll. I've set it to one bar and uh, I've record enabled my audio track and I'm gonna record enable the transport and hit play. Now, the tricky part is I have to get the timing just right because I have to record within that selection. And here we go. In Pro Tools, okay. And there it is, that's my new thing. Now, that one wasn't terribly difficult. I had enough time. The amount of dialogue I needed to record was easy to fit into that selection space. But let's say I didn't time it perfectly and I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do another pass right over the top of that. In Pro Tools, okay. Well, this time I kind of started my dialogue a little bit early and I'm stuck, right? I chopped it off, not a good thing. There's a feature in Pro Tools that will allow you to prevent bad punch-ins or early performances. I don't know what you wanna call that, but I'm gonna go up here to Options Menu and go to Quick Punch. Now, if I try to trim this clip out, there's, there's nothing there to trim. I can, I can close it, you know, minimize it, but I can't expand it beyond the selection. If I enable Quick Punch, however, which is under the Options menu, Quick Punch, and I know it's in Quick Punch because there's a little P in the Record button of the Transport. Same thing applies for the Window menu, I mean the Floating Transport window. If I pull that down here, this is the same thing, same Transport, there's a P in the Record button, right? So now I'm gonna go into Record, and I'm gonna hit Play. Pro Tools, okay. And once again, I started my dialogue too early. I started reading it before Pro Tools hit that selection, but in this case, it's okay. Because I can trim up the backside, and I'm gonna pull it out, and I can trim out the other side. So there's my whole recording. In Quick Punch mode, Pro Tools actually goes into record when at the beginning of the pre-roll section. So not only does it record during the selection, but it records for one bar ahead of the selection because I had a one bar pre-roll. So the takeaway here is if you're gonna do punch-ins, make a selection of the area that you want to re-record or punch in on, enable quick punch, 
under the options menu and you have to use a pre-roll. It can be a half a bar, it could be a bar, or maybe it's not bars and beats. Maybe it's you know three seconds or four seconds, whatever amount of time yeah, makes sense. If you're doing music, it's usually helpful to do one or two bars or four bars at a time so that the music starts in a, in a musical fashion. So anyway, that's punching in in Pro Tools. You'll never miss a punch this way. You can do this across two or more tracks at the same time too. So if you wanna punch in on a drum kit, recording multiple tracks at once, you can do that.